the, the Supreme Court is looking at Biden's, Biden's giveaway to people who own who debt. giveaway is your term, not my term. Well, we are. They have college debt loan. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to give them money. Are we're we? going to forgive debt. Well, we're <laughs> okay. we're arguing about the same thing, but there was no argument. We're giving the money away. Okay, so I just want to read you this. And again, this is against why people sometimes, I think, question some of what you're saying. Uh, this is a survey, student loan forgiveness recipients. 73% of applicants say they are likely to spend their extra money on non-essential, including vacations, smartphone, drugs, and alcohol. They, they admitted that to the pollster. Who is this pollster? I, NBC, <laughs> NBC News. Um, Fifty-two percent, they are very likely or likely to buy new clothing. Forty-six percent, they would use the money for vacation and eat out at restaurants. This is why people have a thing about, I, I would never call it free money. Oh, I guess I just did. But um. You just watched Bill Maher set up a question to Senator Bernie Sanders about student debt in a way that is so biased, he's almost giving Fox News a run for their money. The only thing missing was animated dollar signs falling from the sky and the Chiron asking who's going to pay for it. But Bill Maher has made it abundantly clear again and again that he is against student debt forgiveness. And we'll get to Bernie Sanders' response to that question he asked here in a moment. But I first want to address Bill Maher's framing. So there's a plethora of reputable polls Bill could have cited to demonstrate how student loans actually affect younger generations. Most of them show that it affects them negatively. He could have cited this morning consult poll finding three-fifths of millennials can't buy a home because of student debt, or this poll showing how a quarter of millennials are moving back in with their parents after college in order to afford their student loan repayments. But instead, he chose to cite a poll that plays into this caricature of student loan borrowers in order to get his audience to believe that we're irresponsible and make bad financial decisions. And the poll that Bill Maher referenced was not conducted by NBC News, NBC News wrote an article about the poll, yes, but they didn't actually conduct or commission the poll. The poll that he cited was commissioned by a company called Intelligent with very suspicious framing. For example, look at the biased framing of this one finding here in particular. Quote, four in 10 say student loans haven't negatively affected their lives, which downplays the 60% of respondents from the same poll who say that student loans have affected them either somewhat negatively or very negatively. You wouldn't spin the results this way unless you were trying to diminish the importance of student debt forgiveness. Not to mention Intelligent commissioned this poll from a company called Pollfish, which is powered by a marketing research company called Protege. And Pollfish is a polling company that uses AI to gauge consumer habits, not socially scientific insight from voters. 538 doesn't even include them in their pollster grading, presumably because an AI-generated poll obviously does not constitute actually reliable social science science research. But let's assume that the poll was 100% accurate. 87% of Biden's student debt relief goes to people making less than $75,000 per year. We're talking about working class people. So if the weight of student debt being lifted off of their shoulders actually did lead to some of them choosing to go on vacation or go out to eat, is it really that bad? I mean, previous generations were able to enjoy their post-college years by taking vacations and buying non-essential items, but millennials and Zoomers are villains if they do the same? Are they supposed to be miserable and live frugally forever in order to garner sympathy from multimillionaires like Bill Maher, who probably graduated with almost no college debt? I mean, it's unreasonable here. But the bias there is evident. Bill Maher wants you to think that People don't deserve student debt forgiveness, and any way that he can lend further evidence to that claim is what he's going to do. But I don't want to bury the lead here because Bernie Sanders' response was excellent. However, this framing is important to address because it shows you how much of an out-of-touch elitist Bill Maher has become. But as biased as he is against young people, Bernie Sanders' response that you're about to see was so compelling, he actually got Bill Maher to agree with him and disarm. Under Trump, the Congress voted for a trillion dollars in tax breaks for the richest people in this money, in this country, and the largest corporations. That's a giveaway. We no. just increased military spending with very little discussion, I don't know if you know this, by $80 billion. Military industrial complex. Including the Democrats. Pardon they, me? The Democrats vote for it too. Yes, absolutely correct. Absolutely yeah. right. All right. But that's socialism, the military. 
That's crony socialism. Well, that's right. Crony capitalism. But but the it, military uh, isn't capitalism. That's that's the government. No, but it's who owns the military industrial complexes. All right, but anyhow. Right. All right. So when you talk about giveaways, you have major corporations in this country that make billions in profit, don't pay a nickel in taxes. Billionaires have an effective tax rate lower than that of a truck driver or a nurse. You have a generation, you talk about this younger generation right now. I got around the country and I talked to a lot of people. You know, I don't know anything about that poll, but I can tell you, I've talked to nurses who are working their asses off, doing the right thing. They leave school $70,000 in that. They can't afford now to get married and have children. They can't afford the housing that they desperately need. So the truth is you've got a generation that everything being equal, the younger generation will have a lower standard of living than their parents. You and I, and I'm a little older than you, can remember 50 years ago, what did it cost to go to the University of California? Remember? 50 bucks, 50, yeah. 500. Virtually free, City yeah. University of New York, right. virtually free. And right well, now these young people are leaving school deeply in debt, they're struggling economically, they deserve a break. It, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Believe it or not, that's it. Bill Maher moved on after conceding his entire argument to Bernie Sanders. And presumably all it took was three seconds of self-reflection spurred by Bernie Sanders just giving a basic response. Unreal. Bernie Sanders asked him, how much did it cost you to go to the University of California? And Bill Maher responded by saying 50 bucks. Now, I'm sure that he was being sarcastic by saying 50 bucks. I don't imagine it actually cost 50 bucks. But the point is that it was much, much more affordable. People in his generation got to graduate with little to no debt. But as biased as Bill Maher may be, he can't claim that that's a fair system. No one who's intellectually honest can. His generation got to graduate with almost no debt when a college degree wasn't even as essential back then, but my generation gets bogged down by debt for the rest of our lives for a degree that we need in order to increase the chances that we land a good paying job and we're somehow villains for getting our debt canceled. That whole line of thinking is just bizarre and unacceptable to me. I mean, how dare people like Bill Maher complain about us getting a small portion of our student debt canceled when he got basically college by getting a minimum wage job. I mean, I've, I've heard from my professors who say they paid off their student debt within a year or two, graduate level student debt within a year or two by getting a job at a fast food restaurant. I mean, the outrage is not that people today are getting their student debt relieved minimally. The outrage is the fact that student debt is a thing in the first place in the richest country on the planet. Now, Bill Maher also called the military spending crony socialism, but was corrected by Bernie Sanders, who rightfully explained that the military industrial complex is composed of private companies who bribe politicians with campaign contributions to get lucrative government contracts. That's capitalism right there in its purest form. So to the extent that that is socialism, it's socialism for corporations and rugged individualism for the rest of us. But what was the point Bill Maher was even trying to make there that government spending is always bad? I mean, the point is that government spending is good if it benefits working people. You can't just say that government spending is always bad because I feel like that's too broad of a statement. But I mean, what Bernie Sanders pointed out there was correct. Nobody asks questions when the government spends on tax cuts for the rich or provides these subsidies to large multinational corporations. But the second the peasants get crumbs, that's when everyone is up in arms and outraged. But to give Bill Maher a little bit of credit, as far gone as he is, there's presumably still a small voice of reason within him. And it's small, but it's there, and it's enough to at least make him temporarily open-minded enough to see the flaws in his own arguments, which is good. I'll give him credit for that. But all it took was someone like Bernie Sanders penetrating that bubble that he created for himself. The problem is that the more that Bill Maher isolates himself from actual lefties and working class people, the more out of touch he will continue to be. Either way, I sincerely hope that this interview with Bernie Sanders got him to reevaluate his worldview, but it's Bill Maher, so um, I'm not gonna hold my breath there because he is a hack. But if you agree with me that Bill Maher has become insufferable, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to help us reach our goal of 400,000 subscribers. We'll leave that there. Were you acting like a...